Hey everyone, it's Deb, and I'm so happy to be here. I love doing this. I'm excited to keep talking about things, and I am today talking about um, being the change that we wish in the world, the change we wish to see in the world. And um, it's funny. It's it's actually on the little ah wrong way, the little thingy I got back here, right there. And um, I'm, hmm, so, you know, when I look around the world and I see all of the stuff that's happening out there in the world, I am pretty convinced that the problems are so big and so complex that the only way we can solve it is on an individual, family, and local level. And what I mean by that, though, is that, um, have you ever heard of the saying, like, if you point one finger out there, you have three, you know, pointing back at you? Have you ever heard of that? All right, well, so, um, it's not like I use that very often, but I, I think it's a good, good way to look at it, which is, like, you know, every time that we point out to the world, and say we need to change this or we need to change that this is the problem that's the problem you're the problem if only this would change then i'd be happier if that person would be different i'd be happier mm-hmm. you know it's so easy to just get caught up in this external orientation of that the that um we need to fix everybody else everything else and somehow we don't have to we don't have responsibility in that now Believe me, like I, I'm, I get it. I get it. Like it's easy to do that when it, when we have like a government and we have systems in place that are broken. Like there are a lot of broken things right now, and I know that we have you know a political system in the United States that is um, it, it's it got some serious challenges. So it's not that I can't see why people feel the impulse to do it. But it is an incredibly disempowering way to live life because we spend so much time talking about and watching news about and and thinking about the problems of the world that we really have so little control over, right? I mean, even... Okay, so let's take one end of the spectrum, which is people who are out there doing advocacy work and they're working like maybe to change policies and they're actually maybe they're going to run for office and they're totally involved okay so those people at least you could argue i mean they're they're doing the best they can they're trying really hard but like the amount of impact we have in our lifetime is actually pretty pretty small and you know generally speaking what we do is like we have to pass the baton to like the next generation because things don't fully change in in usually in one generation so, um, but that, but so they're like at least doing a lot, but a lot of us are more probably, we could agree, many of us are, are like sitting on the couch watching the news or on our phones scrolling through the news or talking to friends about the news and, and we're not, and, and like, yeah, maybe we're doing some things like maybe we have solar panels or maybe we, um, we do like volunteer our time and we try to do good things in the world. And and I'm not denying that most of you probably do, but we're not very few of us are going to have a, 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 an impact, um, a significant or, or any impact at all on the way that our government is run. I mean, even if we vote, which I hope you do, um, even if we vote and we vote in somebody that we really love and adore, it doesn't, we still have very little impact. All we've done is voted somebody in. So we have very, very little impact. And if you live in certain states, your vote really, I mean, you should still vote, but your vote matters less in some states because it's kind of like an automatic, like that it's gonna go to one, one party or the other. And so, we think we're doing things. There's a way that we can talk about things and then somehow feel that by talking about it, by having strong opinions, and by getting upset about it, that we're having an impact. 
And on a social cultural level, I think that can happen. I think we can, you know, make decisions to be like to, to learn about something like, you know, say racism or something. We can we can do our work to educate ourselves and to sort of understand situations better and perhaps um, do better, you know. But like if we look politically, very, very little that we ever do is going to change. And even culturally, to some degree, it's like it happens on a very local level. There's very little that we there's very little we are doing by thinking about and perseverating over problems or very little change we're going to make. So the way we make change is actually um, is much it's it's much smaller. It's a much smaller thing that each of us does. And so let me just let me just say this and it's kind of a like a little bit of a weird thing to say but uh, so I believe wholeheartedly I I really genuinely believe in um reincarnation. So just going to like set the record straight. That's what I believe in and I'm going to talk about it over time. So I believe like that we each come here not by mistake. I believe we are part of a big a much bigger universe and energy field and that it's no mistake that you are you okay and that but that so many of us you know we come into this world and all kinds of things happen to us that make it hard for us to even know who we really are and some people would call that like it's everything socially constructed now I don't know if I'm fully on board with that but I do believe that we are conditioned I do believe that Many things are our personality, like that we come in with sort of like an essence of who we are. And then there are personality things that get layered upon that. And there are ways that we have like adaptive behaviors and defense mechanisms and all kinds of things that happen that make us into who we are as an adult. And that my feeling is that our work, our greatest work we can do in the world is to peel back all of the layers of things that that are covering up the essence of who we are because my feeling is the essence of who we are is like like um the spark of the universe it's like you were put here to be you exactly you with your set of circumstances and your work in this world and your gifts in this world and even your quirky inadequacies and even your um shortcomings like it's not a problem the the you you are the one that like the quirky one that like can't remember people's names. No problem. It's okay. We can love you even if you can't remember our names. Um, the the person who's gifted, who's really talented in in music or or um, in in um, maybe in school academically. The those gifts. Each one of those gifts is like it's a gift and it is so irresponsible of us to not be bringing that out into the world and being us into the in the world and yet being us in the world is one of the scariest things we could ever do all those defense mechanisms and stuff it's like armor and we get to like be behind our armor with our opinions and our are like you know ways that we cut people out of our lives or that we're like we're like modulating how much we let people get close to us the ways that we the ways that we um that we are like um achieving and don't get me wrong achieve achieve it's okay it's okay i'm not trying to hold you back from achieving but the ways we achieve in sometimes in ways that we don't want to like actually show the truth of who we are or the way that we show up strong when we're feeling really weak or the way we are vulnerable um to some people um in like a very very limited way and very very rarely and in most ways we show up with a a really strong guarded self and all these ways it's hard it is life's it is our life's work i believe to show up fully as ourselves to be that courageous it is so courageous and i'll just speak from my own experience it has been the most courageous thing i can do it just getting out here and speaking on this youtube video you may think this is easy for me but let me tell you i've been working on this for 10 years trying to get the courage to be able to really share my voice publicly and to to know who I am. And you know, I only know who I am at this point in my life right now. And I know I'm probably have way more layers I'm peeling back to to be able to show up even more fully to sort of like bring myself more fully to the world. And 
And so I like, I have this vision. It's like, like imagine there's this like big puzzle, this puzzle, and it's called the universe. And that this puzzle is, is um, really like each one of us makes up this puzzle with our own unique little puzzle piece. And it's like, almost like, can you just picture, it's like this big puzzle and it's like calling us back to be part, to, to be the truth of who we are, to be that puzzle piece, right? But most of us are looking around at other puzzle pieces like, oh, I want to be like, I want to be more like that puzzle piece over there. Oh, I want to be more like that one. Like, okay, I want to be like her. And all we really, really want, need to do, and the, the thing that would give us the most peace, I'm telling you, this is not just me speaking, but this is my personal experience, but I, I am telling you, people all over the place would agree with this, that have done this work, that the coming home to ourselves, the being our authentic selves, that authenticity and being like in line, like being showing up in integrity between like the personality and the inner self, it is the most amazing feeling. It is truly like just amazing. It is the place where there is more peace and more breath and more space. It's just so wonderful. So it is a worthwhile journey. But it's not an easy journey, right? It's like, it's simple in that, you know, really what you're doing is, is learning how to pull back all the layers of who you are to be who you are. The, or the, I should say the layers of who you think you are and to be the person that you really are and to stop trying to be like somebody else. I mean, believe me, there's some value. Sometimes when we see in someone else something that we admire, we want to bring that into us and there's, it's really great. There's a, there's a thing called a shadow. In our, we have our dark shadow, which we'll talk about more. But we also have the light shadow. And the light shadow is actually, or the golden shadow is what a lot of people call it. And it's the golden shadow is actually that if I see in another person something like their ability to be an excellent public speaker, it's really if I'm attracted to it and I see it, it's probably because it's something within me that is being called to be manifest in the world. So I'm not suggesting there's no value in comparing to other people, but sometimes we compare in ways that might not be um, healthy or there, or we're like obsessed with wanting to be the other person instead of embodying that ourselves. And so, so I'm not trying to say like, so there, is there some nuance to this, but I, um, I do want to just talk about this and bring this up and, and talk about the importance that I see, the importance of each of us being our unique selves and bringing, and, and if we see in the world that we wish the world to be a different place, like I'll just use an example. If you wish the world to be a more peaceful place and for people to be more um, accepting of other people, let's just say, the first work that you need to do is to do it internally. You need to see where you are not being accepting of yourself, where you reject yourself, where you are violent toward yourself. And I'm, I'm not a fan of this idea that there's violent, like that, that like people can be, uh, well, uh, I, I don't even know if I want to go there, but I definitely have some mixed feelings about people when they talk about like violence in their words. I do believe violent words can be violent. I don't believe that it's the same as physical violence. I think it's different, but I do believe it can hurt as much as, um, as physical violence for sure. And, um, I believe it can even hurt more in some cases, especially when it comes to children. So, but with that said, I do believe we can also be incredibly violent to ourselves. I, I'll speak for me that I've been very violent to myself over my lifetime, you know, very um, unsupportive and unloving and have high, very, very, very high expectations of myself. And I have definitely cracked the whip many a time. And so if I'm being unaccepted, if I'm not accepting myself and I'm being violent toward myself, but I think that the world out there should change. You can see how perhaps we need to sort of reconcile that in some way. Some people would say 
that the outside world is merely a reflection of your inside experience. You could think about that and see what you think about that, if that feels like it resonates with you. And uh, some people also would say that if all of us would do our own inner work, we would clean things up and we'd have a bunch of healthy individuals, which would create a healthy human race. And then it would change the world because we would have more people like there would be if everyone were doing their inner work, if that was just a, like a thing as everybody did their inner work and we had the, the environment, the world that was set up to be able to help people to see like from the inside out, we would we would change the world. We would we would be raising children who don't need to do as much inner work anymore because they would have just been built born into a culture with parents who have already like healed from their past and then they would be not creating as much harm to their children and their children also would have been learning how to be able to heal their own traumas kind of as they go along. And so it's a beautiful thing and we would really genuinely change the world if we would do this. So the biggest thing that I hear from people, first of all, there are not, not everybody is going to be interested. I get it. So I actually do believe that it's a, um, it's, there's probably a tipping point, like where we could get a certain number of people and then it would start to like tip and more people would be able to just benefit from the expanded consciousness and the healing that, that takes place in the other people. So I say, if you are even remotely interested and you're kind of like, huh, that's an interesting way to take responsibility for changing the world. Um, and you feel the call, then please keep watching the video and I will, and, and reach out. Like, I would love to put you in touch with more people who are doing this and help you to find um, more resources to support you. Now, uh, um, if you're already doing this and you're just like, you're on the path and you're like, yeah, I totally believe in that, then stick with me because we need more people. We need to create, we need to generate this energy around this as a pathway. It's like, it's like, um, you know, you have people who are like social justice warriors, right? It's like, that's one way to do it. We're like a, like a, like an inner healing warrior. You know, it's like the people who are saying, I am going to, I, I can't change the world because I, it's just too big. I can't do it all, but I can change me and I can, and me is important. We have to actually understand that we are so pivotal. Each human being, it is actually an, it's a, it's actually a feat to incarnate into being a human body. That's actually a big deal that you are here and it's a blessing. It's like such a blessing. We have this human body that is like so amazing so amazing and you you are you know you it's you you're here and you get to bring all of you and if you could do if that was your life's work I mean yes of course you have to do work to pay the bills and all this stuff but if you're like if your commitment to so some people are going to go like volunteer and do things and you might feel inspired to do that too but if your commitment was to take say I'm going to spend less time watching the news and talking about politics and sort of having that external orientation I'm going to take all the time that I do that and I'm going to instead turn it turn it around and do my own inner work imagine if you could do that imagine how much you would be able to impact the people around you you would how you would impact if you have children your in your children your partners your 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 um, family members your workplace you showing up as the more fully expressed you is giving permission to other people to do it it is literally like like a, like the butterfly effect like you know the butterfly flaps its wings and it changes something over in, on the other side of the world it's like that you you be in, you being more authentically, you will change the world. It will change the people around you. And so that's my invitation. That's my invitation to you is that you stick with me and we start to talk about things from a different perspective. We start to take 100% responsibility for our own experience because it is the only thing you actually can control. You literally cannot control anything else. You you believe you are and you try to, and we do try to contort our outside circumstances to make them more comfortable for us. But even your children, you can't control them. You can temporarily kind of like eh, squish them in a little box and keep them there. But ultimately, your kids are going to fly free and they are going to be them. And that's just the way it is. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we want, like, I want to live in a world where I am, I am giving myself permission to authentically be me 
And I know that the way that I show up in the world, who I be in the world may trigger you. I have to take that risk. But I'm also inviting you to show up fully as you. And if you trigger me, I'm going to take personal responsibility for my reaction. And But I'm going to talk to you more about me in the past at some point soon because I want to tell you about who I was because I was a triggered person. I was an angry person for a while. I didn't look that way. People thought that I was a very happy, friendly person. But if you if something happened and it triggered me, I, I caused a lot of harm to people in my life. And I am, am, you know, really wishing to share that with you so that you can see that this, that, that who I am today is so different than who I was in the past. Um, I'm gonna, I, I actually want to share a story at some point about that was like one of my most embarrassing and somewhat recent stories about my anger issues. So I still have a propensity toward being angry if, if I'm really triggered, but I'm, I, um, I have, I have done, I've come a long way. I'll just say I've come a long way, but it's not just that. I want to talk about people pleasing and I want to talk about trauma and I want to talk about the journey, the journey. And I want you to come along with me on this journey to expand our perspective of the world, to see things differently, to see how important you are. So important. You are so important. And anyone who has given you the impression that you are not so important in this world is somebody who was wounded and who believes that they weren't important in this world. And they're wrong. They're wrong. But I know that it takes time to pull back all those layers and to heal all of those belief systems that make you believe that you're not actually super important in this world. So believe me when I say it, and then come along with me on this journey while we discover how to get there, how to come home, how to walk home to yourself, how to see the world in a way that is way more clear and way more enjoyable, you know? Yeah, so I think I'm going to end it there. I have a lot more to say and I want to share more about like how I got in this path and all of that, but I think I'm going to end it there today and I look forward to hearing what you have to say and if you want to join me, I just want to hear it in the comments. I want you to say, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm in this too. All right? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Bye.